I'm Dr. Robert Hurton, an Associate Professor of Medicine and Artificial Intelligence at Mount Sinai Hospital uh, and the Clinical Director of the Hassel Plotner Institute for Digital Health. Um, we're here at the New Wave of AI and Healthcare Conference uh, at the New York Academy of Sciences. Uh, and I'm, I'm very excited to have with me right now uh, Dr. Curtis Langlotz, who's a professor of radiology, medicine, and biomedical data science at Stanford University and director of the Center for Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Imaging. Uh, and Dr. Langlotz gave a, a, a great plenary talk today um, at our session. So I'm really excited to be able to speak with him today Thank a little you, bit nice more. To be here. Um, so we just have a few questions really to elaborate on some of the topics you spoke about and really the exciting interest in AI and radiology. Um, so just to start off, what is really a topic or tool or technology um, that we should really be paying attention to, but you feel is generally overlooked? Yeah, I am really excited about foundation models. So these are the models that we can train on large amounts of data. So ChatGPT is a good example of a foundation model, which was trained on obviously the text of most of the internet. But we really haven't seen yet foundation models that are trained on high quality medical data. So we're working on, other labs are working on training uh, a model that has uh, access to all the images from a given health system, for example. And I think when we do that and combine it with other forms of data, like uh, the text data in the electronic record and the lab results and genomics, we're likely to develop models that have, like ChatGPT did, have some unexpectedly positive behaviors. And we're learning more about how to evaluate those and making sure that they are uh, you know, performing well on the tasks that we ask them to perform but I think that's likely to be something that we haven't yet seen. And when it happens, we're likely to have some, some good positive surprises. Um, and so I'm a gastroenterologist too, so a, a physician, physician like you. So I'm always interested in how these technologies will be applied to patient care. And I'm always hearing too from my radiology colleagues, you know, sort of how will AI be positioned um, within really the radiologist's um, wheelhouse and how will it integrate into their care? So I'd love to hear a little bit of your thoughts on how this will integrate in the future and um, how can we see it really in, in clinical practice? Yeah. Yeah, I think radiologists now have a, a kind of a mixed view of these models. So many of the models uh, that are being developed today, and there are now uh, almost 700 of them that have been cleared through the FDA, the vast majority of those are targeted at radiologists. But the radiology algorithms are focusing on just a few clinical problems. So detecting nodules or detecting hemorrhage in the brain um, and detecting pneumonia. Those are important tasks. Those are areas where it might be easy for a radiologist to miss a, a nodule, the sort of needle in a haystack problem. But if there are too many false positives, then the radiologist has to take extra time to chase down all of those potential results. And so while it might improve our ability to find nodules, it also could slow us down in our work, and that has uh, you know, significant uh, effects as well. So I think the next wave of algorithms will be more focused on workflow, things like uh, generating a report for me. So you have an algorithm or set of algorithms that can detect everything that's going on in a chest X-ray and then fill those results in a template so that I can review the images, review the draft of the report, and sign it, and that can actually not only help me do better, but also save me time. Right, right. Letting you be able to, to evaluate more images like you had mentioned today in your talk. If yeah. you're coming into hundreds of images in the beginning of the day, how do you sort of move through that in a, in a more exactly. efficient that way? Exactly, that triage function is also very important. Exactly. So then piggybacking on that, what is really the most exciting area that you think in utilizing AI and radiology? Is it, is it these areas of improving workflow perhaps, or in, in evaluating these uh, or reducing miss rates, for example, or yeah. where do you see that? Well, if we can, these algorithms that are built through machine learning are um, more accurate than the ones that I used to build long ago. So it used to take four years and a PhD to build an algorithm to detect uh, a nodule, something like that uh, back in the day. Now with the right training data, we can do that very quickly in a matter of days or weeks and the accuracy is better. So. In theory, we should have fewer false positives, and so that should help us both in terms of accuracy and workflow. But I, I'm still, I would focus back on workflow. Uh, I, I'll give you the report drafting example is one, but another great example um, has 
has to do with summarization. So if I'm reading chest x-rays on a morning shift, I might read 100 chest x-rays. So understanding what's happening with each of those patients in the chart is really a difficult task. And so I would love to have a three-line summary of what's going on with that patient as I look at their images. Because right. sometimes the information that we get as part of the order isn't isn't as complete as we would like. And, and so uh, that's something I think anyone who is part of the care of a patient and maybe your your uh, interaction with that patient is more episodic and you don't know them very well. So certain kinds of expert consultants, uh, gastroenterologists, for example, might, mm -hmm. uh, might benefit from similar kinds of technology. So I think report summarization is another kind of workflow uh, technology that's very exciting coming down the road. Yeah. Uh, and just our final question, uh, you touched on a lot of your research today uh, during your talk, which was great. Um, what do you feel are really some of the challenges in your research that AI has helped you tackle? And really yeah. kind of building on that, where is the technology maybe lacking in areas that you haven't been able to sort yeah. of utilize it as well? Yeah, these technologies are fundamentally, it's machine learning, right? So yeah. it's, we're learning from data. So I would say the biggest challenge really has to do with getting the right data set and the right high quality data that's well curated, well, in some cases we need labels for that data if we're trying to evaluate an algorithm. So making that data more widely available, and we have really taken that to heart. So we've released a number of data sets to try to make those data sets more available to the world. Um, I'd say one of the things that we're doing in the lab that can address that problem is synthetic data. So we can, uh, just as there are models like DALI, which uh, take a text prompt and produce a, an image that, uh, that um, is described by that prompt. We've developed some technology to do that with medical images. So show me a chest x-ray with a small right pleural effusion. And it'll produce something uh, that's fairly realistic. And so we can use that synthetic data to supplement the real data. And that can actually improve the accuracy and the robustness of the algorithms that we train. So that's an exciting area, I would say, and something that we really need to address is the availability of, of data. We try to do it by making clinical data as available as we can while still protecting the privacy of our patients. But also, I think producing some of the synthetic data in the laboratory is going to be very important. Yeah. Um, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your talk today and for sitting down with us to go over some additional questions. And I very much appreciate the patient centric focus that you have, too, in your research of taking these tools and AI and really saying, how can we improve patient care? So uh, uh, it's great. And thank you very much again. Thank time. you. Thanks.